Our guest tonight is 2017 WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, listen, you're on here tonight. I want to talk about something very important to you, to us, something we need to talk about. Let's start with the Angle Strong Addiction Recovery mobile app from AngleStrong.com. Uh, this app was designed to help people avoid relapse, rehospitalization, and overdose. Uh, what are you hoping to accomplish with the release of this app? Well, uh, what we're hoping to do is help with the epidemic in the United States. It's the worst epidemic in U.S. history. Uh, over 60,000 people died in the last two years from heroin overdoses, and uh, it's just getting worse and worse. And I worked on this app, the Angle Strong app, with Dr. Jonas, who's a recovering addict and also a doctor, a uh, recovering addict for 30 years. And he came up with an incredible concept for the app, and that was um, – it's, it's an app that you follow uh, every single day. Um, you check in daily. If you don't check in daily, your lifelines, whether it be your family, your loved ones, or your sponsor will get notified. Uh, it's also GPS enabled, so if you do relapse, we're gonna find you. So it, it's more of a hold yourself accountable. Uh, join with me, Kurt Angle, and uh, I walk you through it. Um, uh, there are so many different uh, things in this app that are that are really cool, uh, but, but for the most part, it's just you follow the app and, and you, you follow the program and uh, Hopefully that will keep you in recovery, and uh, we, we're we're really hoping that a lot of people sign up and join us. And you can sign up at anglestrong.com. Uh, I also have a lot of workout programs, uh, AA meetings closest to you, rehab specials for you. Um, uh, we're going to have a monthly call with me where you'll be able to talk to me. Uh, I'll be answering questions. So it, it's a pretty cool concept, and we're excited to bring it to the market. Well, myself, as someone who has lost several loved ones to addiction and seeing an estimated 78 people dying from opioid overdoses each and every day in the United States, how did your own personal experiences motivate you with this Angle Strong app? Well, I, you know, my family has been uh, uh, nailed down with addiction quite a bit. Um, my dad uh, was a construction uh, crane operator, a construction company. He was an alcoholic, great father, uh, but he was a prisoner to the alcohol. He had to be, he had to drink heavily all the time. Uh, it ultimately cost him his life. He was in an accident on the job. Uh, that was when I was 16. Um, my, my sister Leanne died of a heroin overdose in 2003. And my brother David, two years ago, uh, high on drugs with his wife, who was also an addict, uh, he killed her and he spent any time in jail. Uh, my Olympic coach as well, Dave Schultz, uh, from, if you've ever seen the movie Foxcatcher. Uh, he was shot and murdered by the club owner, John DuPont, who was also an addict and alcoholic, drug addict and alcoholic. So uh, it, it's come, it, it really rings close to me with all the situations that occurred in my life. But um, I was introduced to painkillers when I broke my neck in 2003. And uh, the first pill I took, I, I knew I was hooked. I loved it. I loved the way it made me feel. Uh, when one didn't work anymore, I was taking two. Two didn't work. I was taking four. And I... Your body builds a tolerance, and I got up to uh, 65 extra strength like it in a day. And uh, that's, that's pretty lethal for anybody, uh, no matter what size you are. Um, I was hiding it from WWE. Uh, back then, they didn't have the drug policy they do now. They have an incredible policy now. So um, uh, it was um, – I, I just wanted to keep taking it uh, for two reasons. One, um, kept injuring my neck, and I just wanted to numb myself and try to go as long as I could. And, uh, and see how far I could string out my career. And two, I didn't want to go through the withdrawal effects. So the, with those two, uh, I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to be high all the time. I, I, uh, I didn't care about being a role model. I didn't care about being a husband or a father. Uh, once you're hooked on the drug, that's the only thing that's most important to you. All I cared about is how I was going to get the drug for the next day. Wow. Well, yeah, now, now, with the Angle Strong app, Kurt, now, I, I've downloaded it myself because I wanted to see what it would be like, what the experience is like for someone struggling with addiction. Have you got the chance to go through the app yourself? And how excited are you to, to bring this to people who are recovering? Oh, I, I joined the app right away. Dr. Jonas presented it to me, and I, I got on the app right away. And, uh, and there, there are a lot of great features. You know, you have your daily reminders. You have your uh, your uh, check-in. You have the, the lifelines that will, you know, will be notified uh Make sure that you're doing okay. Uh, we didn't we didn't want 
the loved ones and the sponsors to be overbearing where they're always breathing down your neck. But we wanted them to know how, how the addict or the, the patient was doing. So um, th- this really, what we're trying to do is we're trying to end or try to lower or reduce the relapses and, uh, and, and especially ultimately the deaths. And, and that's why we have the GPS tracking, just in case we can't get a hold of you, uh, we'll find where you are. Uh, but, but it also has a chat room where, where recovering addicts can talk to each other, talk to me. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool concept. And um, when I saw everything that the app da- did, I, I knew I wanted to be part of it. And that's why I, I teamed up with Dr. Jonas. Well, shifting gears a bit here, the biggest news in recent weeks outside of the Angle Strong app has been the announcement that you will be inducted into the 2017 WWE Hall of Fame. How did you find out about the honor, and what were your initial thoughts? I, uh, I, I, was, I was surprised. I was very honored. Um, I was surprised because I wasn't done wrestling yet. <laughs> uh, usually you get your, you know, you're inducted in the Hall of Fame when you're done wrestling. Uh, but when WWE called me, uh, it was Triple H. Uh, he called me about a month and a half ago. And we talked a year prior, and he said, we're going to do something with you. Uh, just give me some time, and when we come out with it, I'll give you a call. Um, and I was thinking I was getting a call about wrestling, uh, and they, they they presented the Hall of Fame to me, and I I, I was I was elated. Um, I, I know I don't have much time re- left in wrestling, and, and I'm transitioning, uh, so it was okay. I, I was all right doing it. I did bring up the fact that you know, am I going to be able to wrestle again? And uh, basically, what the, the you know I was shot down and told, listen, let's just let's just get you to the Hall of Fame. We'll talk after that. So uh, there are no plans in me wrestling. Uh, there are rumors about it, but uh, I haven't heard anything. But um, I, 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 most likely I will wrestle again, but uh, we haven't talked about it yet. Mike Chiari, next question. Well, you recently listed uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, John Cena, and The Undertaker as your preferred choices to induct you into the Hall of Fame, uh, and you had Austin at the top of that list. How much input do you anticipate having regarding who inducts you, and how important is it to you that one of those three that you mentioned gets the nod to do so? Well, I wanted somebody that had a huge impact on the business, and and nobody's had more of an impact than those three. Uh, You know, I I did uh, with John Cena. I was more of a teacher to John. When he started in um, WWE, I was his first match. And um, not only that, but I was also – I was teamed up. I wasn't teamed up with him, but uh, Vince McMahon put me with him to kind of teach the trade a little bit. And for about six or seven months, we traveled the world, and I was, you know, giving him my advice and trying to, you know, bring him along because Vince really loved John, and I don't blame him for that. He's very marketable. He's a great personality, and he's a great athlete. So uh, it was my job to kind of groom him a little bit. Uh, The Undertaker in Austin. I don't have to say much about those two. They're the biggest names in wrestling, period. But um, they taught me a lot about about the trade and um, and how you know ring psychology and, and what to do and timing. Uh, those two probably taught me more than anybody. And I, I would add up there with uh, I would put Triple H up there as well. But those three, um, I knew that uh, I wouldn't get Triple H in back me because he's the talent relations director. So I, I wanted uh, one of those three. Um, uh, I, I have not been told whether I can pick. Uh, I don't believe your. I don't believe the uh, talent is the one that gets to pick. I think the WWE, uh sets up who they want uh, to induct you. So I, I would. I would be surprised if it wasn't one of those three. So uh, I think that Vince McMahon, Triple H, know uh, the kind of relationships I have with Undertaker and uh, John Cena and and Stone Cold. So. Um, they do know that uh, I want one of those, so most likely it'll be one of those three. Brandon Govan? Who are you most looking forward to reuniting with or meeting for the first time at the Hall of Fame ceremony and WrestleMania weekend? Well, uh, there are a lot of guys. I mean, um, I haven't talked to, you know, it's the crazy thing in professional wrestling, or I should say sports entertainment is, uh, when you're on the road, they're your best friends, they're your family. Uh, but when you're done... Uh, you don't contact them. They don't contact you. You don't have the only person I've actually kept contact with, and it's been very uh, vague, very vague, uh, vaguely, is uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's probably the only person 
that I talk to maybe four or five times a year. Other than that, I don't talk to anybody. So uh, the business is fickle like that. I mean, you're on the road, and they're your family and best friends, and when you're at home, uh, you don't get a call. <laughs> you don't call them. So um, uh, I, I'm looking forward to the relationships I had the strongest with or probably Brock Lesnar and Big Show. Um, I spent a lot of time with them traveling on the road, so uh, it would be really nice to see those two because those are the two guys that I spent the most time with. Mike Chiari? Well, WWE obviously still has a heavy reliance on veteran performers. Uh, with Brock Lesnar against Goldberg shaping up as one of the WrestleMania main events, it looks like. Um, when you see a guy like Goldberg return and potentially be on the verge of winning the Universal Championship, how does that impact your desire to wrestle again for WWE and also your belief that WWE is ultimately going to ask you to wrestle again? Well, I, I think that gives me a lot of hope. Um, Goldberg's a great wrestler. He was, you know, he in his prime, he was the man, uh, especially for WCW. Uh, I, I don't think his WWE career uh, ended the way he wanted it to, but, um, uh, you know, he is an incredible athlete and he's done a lot to pro wrestling. Uh, it's nice to see somebody of his stature and somebody that hasn't been there in, gosh, 14, 15 years, uh, to go in there and, and uh, get a great spot. Um, it does give me a lot of hope. And uh, I wouldn't doubt if, um, you know, once we get past the Hall of Fame and I take the physical and I pass it, which uh, most likely they're going to want me to do, uh, I, I wouldn't doubt if I'm going to be in the title hunt. It's just uh, – you know, when you have big names like that, you have to use them uh, the right way. Uh, you don't you don't put them on an opening card match and and not promote that. You you know, when you have a name like Goldberg or uh, you know when Brock Lesnar came back, uh, when when Undertaker comes back when he's gone for you know ten months uh, or a Kurt Angle that hasn't been there in eleven or twelve years, uh, you're going to want to put them in a pretty pretty high profile spot. So. Uh, I expect that if I do wrestle, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I've kept my body in great shape. Um, I've been wrestling at Indies with great talent like Del Rio, Cody Rhodes, uh, Rey Mysterio. Uh, just keeping my body in shape for just in case this WWE does call me, I'll be ready to go. Brandon Gavin? WWE Network has been a great outlet for current superstars and legends. If you were able to have your own series or perhaps a one-off special on the network, what type of show would you like to participate in or help produce? Wow. Um, that's tough. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the best of whoever the athlete is, whether it be me or, you know, or somebody else. Um, I, I think that um, – uh, fans are intrigued on uh, not only who their favorite matches are, but hearing the talent's perspective of what his favorite matches are. Um, it, the, the fans always seem to make the call of, oh, this was Angle's best match, and this was his second and third and fourth. But but I believe the talent truly knows um, how well he did, he or she did. And, uh, you know, I think that sometimes his or her favorite matches differ from the fans' favorite matches. And usually that's what WWE does is they take a poll. What's Kurt Angle's top 10 favorite match or best matches? And they take a poll with the fans and they vote. But I'd like to hear the talent's perspective of what he thinks or she thinks their top 10 matches are. Mike Carey? You uh, confirmed a few years ago on Jim Ross's podcast that you once had a shoot wrestling match with Brock Lesnar and that you managed to beat him. Um, after seeing what Brock was able to do in his return to UFC and knowing, obviously, how much of a physical specimen he is, how do you think yeah. that you would fare uh, if you were to face him again right now? And would you ever have any interest in doing that again? Gosh, no. He kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> guys, I'm 48 years old, man. <laughs> uh, you know, when I, when I got in that ring with Brock, uh, I, was, I was in my prime. I was 38 or 39. Uh, actually, 37, 38. Um, I, that was the best I felt in my life was right around that age. Other than my neck, uh, you know, the neck, the neck, the injuries with my neck uh, had a, you know, it had a lot to do with why I left WWE. Uh, I had, four, I broke my neck four times in two and a half years. Uh, it was a very bad time for me, and I got addicted to painkillers, and you know, I was hiding that from WWE, and I just felt like I was a liability to Vince. So. Um, you know, I I opted out. I asked for my release and uh, didn't speak to Vince for 11 years. Um, so 
um, you know, when I did wrestle Brock, the rumors fly around. I kicked his butt. That's not true. It was it was a very close match. Um, you know, I, basically all it was is uh, whoever was going to get the first takedown in the match was going to be over. And I, I fortunately got the first takedown, but the, it lasted 15 minutes. We went at it for a long time. Um, but but I, I, I knew I would beat Brock. Um, you know, there's a difference between an NCAA champion and an Olympic gold medalist, even if I did give up 80 pounds. You know, Brock was probably about 310 pounds back then. I was about 225. So, um, uh, but I've always wrestled guys, guys that size. I, you know, I wrestled heavyweight in college, so I wasn't new to it. And um, uh, I think Brock knew that uh, – <laughs> I think he knew he got beat, but um, – it wasn't something uh, – I will tell you this. Uh, Brock is the greatest athlete I've ever gotten in the ring with. Um, uh, he, he, can, he can be the best at whatever he wants to be. He was an NCAA champ. He was a UFC champion. He was one, one cut away from making the NFL team without ever playing football in his life. And, 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 and the Minnesota Vikings wanted him to go to NFL Europe for a year and come back. They, they were going to do a deal with him. Uh, he would have been the 10-time All-Pro. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I I know his capabilities, and he he has that kind of potential. He would have been a Hall of Fame in any sport he wanted to do, and that, that, that to show that versatility, um, not many people can do that. Brock is uh, Brock's a special athlete, not because he's so big and strong, because he's a damn great athlete and one of the best I've ever gotten the ring with. Brandon Gavin, final question. Is there a match from your career that you feel has been the most influential or made the most impact to the business? And also, what is your personal favorite match that you didn't participate in? Oh, gosh. Um, all right, I, I can give you three of those, all three. Um, the best match I ever wrestled, and it's unfortunate, was Chris Benoit Royal Rumble 2003. Uh, when I wrestled that match, after the match was over, I had one guy that I looked up to most that came to me and said, you, Kurt Angle, not Chris Benoit, not anybody else, because I structured the match and I put it together and I called the match. He said, you, Kurt Angle, you just raised the bar for all of us. And that was Triple H. Um, uh, you know, I, I was only in the business three and a half years. Uh, that's, that's relatively very, very new. Um, so I knew right then that I was, I was the best. Um, and, you know, you're supposed to put in 10, 15 years before you can ever claim that fame. Uh, but but I knew it. I, I knew I picked it up quickly. I, I I was on TV a year exactly a year after I started training. Uh, nobody's ever done that. Um, but but my the match because it was Chris Benoit and the things that ha- occurred in the past, people tend to forget that match. So I would have to say that my my match my favorite match was Shawn Michaels, and the reason for that it was WrestleMania 21. Shawn and I never touched before that match that was our very first match and we did not practice anything before that match sean and i did go over talk over things we wanted to do but to never lock horns with somebody else and have that type of match of that caliber that's right now considered one of the top three greatest matches of all time uh that 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 never happens usually you wrestle guys a hundred times and then you have all these spots in your head and you say okay hey we'll do spot a here and then, and then later on in the match, we'll do spot B here. And then we'll do spot F later on. And then the finish we used last week, we'll use that. So it's easier once you wrestle a guy 100 times to structure a match. And you can even add on to the match you did previously. So Sean and I didn't do that. We, it was our first match, and, uh, and we lit it up. We, 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 we dominated WrestleMania 21, and we were an undercard match. We weren't a title match. We were a feature and um, uh, to steal the show, uh, all, the first time that you lock horns, that never happens, and, and we did it. And I think that proved that Sean and I were the two best at that time and possibly the two best of all time. Uh, the match, uh, my favorite match uh, that I never got to participate in was Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels when they had their Iron Man match. Uh, the, the psychology of that match was incredible. Uh, the fact that those guys didn't have a finish for an hour and that you were glued to the TV, um, that speaks volumes on those two, two guys. There are only a few guys that could do that, and that's, that's John Michaels, Bret Hart, 
and I'd say Ric Flair and maybe Triple H or, or Stone Cold Steve Austin. Nobody else can do that type of match with no finish in an hour and keep people at the edge of their seat. That, that, that was the one match that I would say, damn, I'm jealous. I wish I was part of that. Well, a huge thank you to Kurt Angle. Support his new Angle Strong Addiction Recovery mobile app on Google Play for Android devices, in the App Store for iOS devices, and on AngleStrong.com. Tell the fans where else they can support you and the Angle Strong app. Just, you know what, go to AngleStrong.com, sign up for the app. It's available right, right now on the Android phone at Google Play, and it's supposed to be available by next week at the uh, App Store for the iOS, the iPhone. So, I just want to thank you guys for the interview, and uh, I'm just looking forward to the Hall of Fame, and I'm also looking forward to my future with Angle Strong. Another huge thank you, Kirk. Good luck. So much good luck moving forward. Thanks, guys. Take care.